catheters, otherwise known as swan gans catheters. So I have one here with me today. Um, the reasons why you would see a swan or PA catheter would be for our heart failure population, specifically uh, LV failure or any pulmonary hypertension uh, population, that would also be an indication. We can use it to assess uh, vasoactive drugs, to titrate inotropes, to titrate diuretics, to titrate fluids. So we can get all that information from using a PA catheter or a swan gans catheter. So those would be some of the reasons and indications that you would see it upstairs in the ICU, that we would want to leave it in dwelling as opposed to taking just our pressures down here in the cath lab. Uh, that would be a snapshot of somebody's hemodynamics, but upstairs we can monitor it long term and actually make changes real time in medications uh, for these patients. So those are some of the reasons why you might see one of these upstairs. So let's talk about the PA catheter. So you can see it is yellow. It has marks on it that indicate the depth of insertion. Um, and then back, so all this would be on the inside. That's what we would uh, place here in the cath lab. And then what you guys are gonna see up in the ICU is going to be this part of the catheter. So this is gonna be coming outside of a sheath. So we'll have some type of sheath, which is just a fancy word for an IV. Um, this is going to be coming out of the, the hemostatic valve of the sheath. And what you're gonna see on this end is gonna be a couple different colored items. So the blue right here, this is the CVP port. That's the most um, proximal port of this device. The yellow is gonna be your PA port. That is the most distal part of this device. So that's gonna be an opening all the way here at the end. And then your CVP opening, let me see if I can actually find it here, is gonna be somewhere more proximal on this tubing. Oh, here it is, I just felt my finger run over it. So it's right there at 30 centimeters. And then you're gonna see a syringe with a little slide clamp right there. So our syringe on this, this is a seven French Swan catheter. Our syringe on this is gonna be one and a half mLs of air, you can see I cannot pull it back further than that, okay? And then this connector right there, you're gonna see that red line right there, red line. When the red line is in line, that means that you can inject air through it. So I will attach my syringe and let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to inject air and you're gonna see this balloon inflate all the way at the distal tip, okay? And then we're gonna see it deflate there and what you're gonna to wanna to see upstairs is no air in our syringe, and you're gonna to wanna to see it closed like that. You see how the lines do not line up anymore. That is just a safety mechanism, a reason why um, you don't ever want this balloon to inflate unless you are trying to inflate it. And you can see how accidentally it could get inflated very easily if you leave it just like that. It could just get pushed. So our safety mechanism is to just leave it locked like that. The other part of this catheter is gonna be this. This is your thermistor. This is where you're going to take this red cap off. It may already be off when they get upstairs to you. You're gonna attach this to the thermistor of your monitor. It's a little round uh, connection that you screw in. That's gonna give you your patient's temperature. It's gonna give you a core body temperature, a continuous core body temperature. And then when we're ready to um, take measurements such as a thermodilution to get a cardiac output, that is the actual measurement that we're going to use. We're gonna use an outside measurement and the inside measurement to get a cardiac output. So those are the basic components of a swan. This is, like I said, a seven French swan. We also have a seven and a half French swan that you may see occasionally. That's just gonna have an extra infusion port on it. So all it's gonna say on it is gonna be infusion port. Um, all of these are also labeled. I don't know if you can see right there. They say on them, this one says PA or distal, and this one says proximal inject. So if you have an infusion port, it's also gonna just say proximal infusion. We call that a VIP swan. 
That's just to give you guys extra access to infuse medications, vasoactive drugs or anything that you might need to infuse for the patient. You can draw blood from it, things like that. So that's our basic components of our swan that we have here today. Um, when they come up to you, this will already, already be in the patient. So the things that you are gonna need on the floor are gonna be a pressure bag, you're gonna need your fluid, you're going to need your injectable um, syringe, and you're going to need um, your cables to plug into your monitor, and then you're also gonna need your tubing, your pressure tubing to hook up to this. Since you have a PA and a CVP, you're gonna need two of those pressure tubings and two setups, one to monitor your CVP and one to monitor your PA. All right, so great. So your patient has a PA catheter. So what are you gonna do with it? Your doctor tells you, I want to get cardiac outputs by thick or thermodilution. There's two different ways you can do it. And they're gonna give you a frequency of how often you should be doing that, okay? Every six hours, every eight hours, once a shift, whatever the frequency is. So they should give you an order to tell you how often to do it. And they'll also tell you what type of mode they want to do that in. So a thick, let's talk about thick first. In uh, Epic, there's a flow sheet for fix. So you can rent that in to your flow sheet. And then it will tell you what numbers you need to plug in. You'll plug in some numbers, it uses a constant, and then it's going to give you a cardiac output based upon those numbers. So, different components of a FIC. When you draw a FIC, you're going to want to be taking what's called a coax symmetry profile. You've probably heard of that, you've probably done one before. You're going to Draw that from your distal CVP, or I'm sorry, distal PA port from your catheter. You're going to use an ABG syringe. If this was hooked up to tubing here, you would have some type of stopcock somewhere on your tubing. You're going to discard blood, and then you're going to use your ABG syringe to slowly withdraw blood from your PA port to get a oxygen saturation out in the PA. It's also going to give you a hemoglobin. You're going to use those two numbers to calculate the FIC. Again, that's in a flow sheet in EPIC. When you're drawing this, big, or big um, things to think about are you're checking an oxygen saturation in the pulmonary artery. Okay, that's a low pressure system, hopefully, hopefully lower pressure system. And so you don't want to start to try to pull too quickly on that. If you pull really quickly, you're going to get air bubbles. You're going to introduce oxygen to that sample and it's going to give you a false reading. So you're not going to have a correct oxygen saturation for your PA. So just make sure that when you're withdrawing the blood that you're doing it slowly, using a syringe, discarding that and then filling up your ABD syringe. And then when you're done, you're going to want to use your pigtail from your pressure tubing to then flush and clear that line. So it's nice and clear, there's no air bubbles, and you're not flushing directly into your PA. So that's for a FIC. Um, and again, the doctor will tell you how often they want that. In addition to that, um, you can use either a wedge number that the physician has given you, or you can use your pulmonary artery diastolic in place of the wedge. Um, again, it's just another conversation that the physician that you need to have with them, are, are they going to be wedging this balloon for you so that you can get the wedge number, or should I use the pulmonary diastolic number? Just talk to them about that and clear up that information. These are all going to be very specific situations and different, I'm sure, so just a conversation you need to have. If you're going to do thermodilutions, whatever frequency the doctor has ordered, that is gonna be something that you're going to do through your CVP port right here. So right here, 
you can see you've got your uh, injectable syringe. It's a 10 cc syringe right here. This is a temperature probe. You're gonna need to have that hooked up to your temperature um, uh, cable in addition to having this one hooked up. This is the internal temperature. This is gonna be an external temperature. And then what you're gonna do is pull up the thermodilution screen on your monitor and you're going to fill this up with 10 cc's of saline. I don't think I can pull back, but fill it up with 10 cc's of saline. You're gonna watch your patient. You're gonna wait for end expiration. At end expiration, you're going to inject at a very steady fluid uh, motion all the 10 cc's into your CVP port. And that's gonna measure the temperature here and then internally on the catheter, and that's going to give you a cardiac output. All right, so now let's talk about some of our waveforms. Um, these are the things, these are the things that you guys are going to be monitoring upstairs. These are the things that are important. This is why we're putting this in, right? Um, a lot of times when we put these in, we put them in because somebody does not have normal pressures, right? So they're not going to have a normal RV pressure, maybe, or they're not going to have a normal PA pressure. That's the reason why we're putting them in. So um, normal pressures, I'm going to leave you guys to look those up. Um, you guys. There's many places where you can review those, what a normal pressure is. But what I'm more interested in for you guys is the waveforms. What does a waveform look like? So I have a book here and I also have a math lab report because I think this is a really good way for you guys to uh, look at things and understand what we down here in the cath lab have looked at. If you know what the patient who you are specifically taking care of, if you know what their baseline is here in the cath lab, what those waveforms look like, it's gonna be easier for you guys to understand and recognize that you are looking at a PA waveform versus a wedge waveform for that patient, for instance. So um, let's, talk, let's look at textbook waveforms first of all. So in this textbook here, we have um, the PA catheter in number one is coming down right into the right atrium. So you can see that's the right atrium. Here's our EKG. And then down here is what the right atrium pressure looks like. Looks just like a CVP. It's gonna be a lower number, hopefully. <laughs> Again, maybe not uh, considering why we're putting these in, but it's going to look like that. That's your CVP or right atrial number, okay? So you'll find that from your blue connection on your swan. You guys will not see an RV waveform, so I'm not going to discuss it. That's just something that we do down here in the cath lab. The waveform that you are going to see on the distal tip of your catheter is going to be this one right here. This is a PA waveform. So that is when your catheter is in your pulmonary artery, but not all the way out to a wedge. So you're gonna see, it looks kind of like a, um, uh, an art line waveform a little mm -hmm. bit. You're gonna see a dichrotic notch. Occasionally you'll see some larger spikes than this. Again, those are just different implications that I am going to encourage you to look at your MAC lab report to see what your patient's normal look like, looks like. But a PA waveform looks similar to an arterial waveform. Um, and you can look up the normal pressures of what that would be, but let's, we'll look at our patient too. And then a wedge waveform, this is number four right here. This is a wedge waveform, okay? Looks kind of similar to our CVP waveform. Um, it's a little bit flatter. If you see that on your monitor, that is something that we do not want. That's not something that we want the patient to be, we don't want this PA catheter to be wedged for an extended period of time, okay? So if you were to see that on your monitor, a wedge waveform, you would want to check that your balloon is deflated if your balloon is deflated, then you might need to say, okay, we need to get a stat x-ray. We need to see how far out this is. If this catheter, sometimes these catheters can self-wedge, okay? They can be a little bit too far out. So if you see this waveform, that's something that you wanna make sure that you address very quickly because that's not a waveform that you want to have 
over an extended period of time. This is from the cath lab with a Mac lab report. Um, so all of our patients, when they're down here, we take snapshots of what their pressures look like here in the lab. Um, and it's, it's, it's reported on our report. So that report that we send up to you guys is a really good tool for you to use for your patients so that you know what your patient's specific waveforms look like. So this patient right here, this is the RA waveform that she had. Um, again, that's, that correlates to the CVP that's on your blue port. That's where you're going to be looking at this waveform. So her RA, the mean of the RA is eight. So it's on the high normal side. The next waveform I'm gonna show you for this patient, this is her wedge waveform. Her wedge waveform right here, you can see, it's a little bit blunted, looks similar to the RA, but your pressures are gonna be a little bit higher. That's the waveform where we take the wedge pressure, and that's how we can sometimes determine diuretics, inotropes, what, what patients might need, fluids, et cetera. So this is a waveform that you don't want to see routinely unless you are trying to attempt to wedge your balloon. The next waveform is going to be the pulmonary artery waveform for this patient. Right here, this is the PA waveform. So again, all these patients come up with this. So you know what your specific patient's waveforms look like when they were down here in the lab, and you should have a similar waveform on your monitor when they get up to you. The PA waveform is you can obtain from the yellow port on your SWAN catheter. Um, and again, look at your MAC lab report and just confirm that they're about the same. concerned about upstairs. So you have this catheter. This patient's been delivered to you by one of us. You're going to want to know where your catheter is, okay? Because if it gets too far out into the pulmonary artery, remember it can wedge. It can spontaneously wedge. These things can move. So you're going to want to know where it is. You're going to want to know how to measure it. You want to know where it was when the patient left the cath lab and where it is now. So Again, on here, you can see all these markings, okay? A big line, a big black line means 50, 50 centimeters. The small black lines mean 10 centimeters. So we'll start from this end. You won't see any of this, it'll be in a patient, but this helps to make sense. Right here where there's one small black line, this is 10 centimeters. That's only 10 centimeters into a patient's body. You would never see that. 20, 30, 40, big black line, that means 50. Big black line, small little line, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then two big black lines, that's 100. So this is gonna be more the, the area where you're gonna see uh, on the outside of the patient because the rest of this is gonna be inside. Um, so this is gonna be coming again out of a sheath, and then we're gonna have a sterile sleeve on this. The sterile sleeve is just a piece of clear plastic that's covering this, that connects, that keeps this all sterile and connects to the sheath. So that way, if there do need to be adjustments, if the catheter needs to be pushed in further, it's all still sterile, the doctor can just push it in over that sterile sheath. So you're gonna see probably somewhere between 70, 80, 90, you know, you're gonna see these lines on the outside. So let's say for instance, a patient comes up to you and you see a big line and three small lines. So you know that right here, where that big line is, that's 80 centimeters in that patient's body, okay? You're probably not going to get somewhere exact where you can measure. It's very rare that somebody is right at this, this mark right here. So that's when you either need to grab a, um, what is it, the Q-tips I think have 
the, the sterile Q-tips that they use for wound, uh, wound nurses, they, that what they use. You can either get that and you can measure this precisely, or you can kind of eyeball it. You can say, okay, that's 10 centimeters here. So it's in right there. So I'm gonna say that that's, again, this is 80. So I'm gonna say, oh, that's at 75. I can tell that's at 75 right there because that's half that distance, right? Right there. So that's where you're going to have to be measuring. You're gonna to wanna to document that every shift. You're gonna to wanna to give that in handoff. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you know where it is. If that ever changes, if that distance ever changes, it should only be because a doctor has changed it. If a doctor is going to push your swan in further or pull your swan out more, they should always tell you that they're doing that. So if you go in and you see that there's something different about it and a cardiologist left, just left the room, you know, try to grab them and be like, what did you do? What's going on here? Um, because it should always be constant. These can sometimes move on their own. Of course, these patients, some of them are awake, some of them walk, some of them move. So it can move on its own, again, spontaneously. So if you notice any changes in it, always a good thing to bring it up to somebody, your cardiologist, your ICU intensivist, and just say, hey, I think that that catheter moved. Maybe we should get an X-ray. Okay, because you don't want this catheter to go too far out, again, to a wedge position spontaneously. That could be really bad. That's cutting off blood flow distal to that, okay? So in your pulmonary arteries. You don't want that to happen. Um, so chest x-rays are good. Morning chest x-rays are great. Um, you wanna make sure that it's in the same place, monitoring where it is. Um, if you ever have, let's say, a dampened waveform, you can't, you're not getting what you think you should be getting, always check your connections. Check all your connections of your pressure tubing, check your stop cocks, check your pressure bag, make sure it's pumped up enough. Sometimes the pressure gets low on your pressure bag and that could clear up the problem. Pull your pigtail on the pressure tubing, give it a nice flush, make sure there's no air in it. The, the connections are tight and there's enough air in your um, pressure bag. Those are good things to check. Um, or grab a friend, right? Troubleshoot with a friend because uh, two, eye, two sets of eyes are always better than just one. So um, they might see something that you missed. Um, always make sure that your uh, PA catheter and your CVP are zeroed every shift, just like you would an art line. We're zeroing it to the same spot, the plebiscetic axis, okay? So you wanna make sure that it's zero. All right, so uh, also on your line, you wanna make sure that you zero it at least once a shift. Um, I like to also zero it anytime I'm going to shoot cardiac outputs or do a fic. I always like to zero it before I take any of those numbers. So you're zeroing it again to the plebiscetic axis, same place you would zero an R line, um, at least once a shift or before you take your pressures. Probably a good practice to do before you take any of your pressures just to make sure that it's accurate. Especially if your patient is mobile, they're moving their head up, they're moving their head down, they might be sitting on the side of the bed, things like that. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's zero prior to getting any numbers uh, that you're gonna record. Um, Another thing that we should think about too is these patients, a lot of them, they are walking and or walkie-talkie people, right? They have heart failure. They might be on melanone. They might be waiting for a heart. Um, they might be on a VAD. They're going to go get a VAD. Um, so these people, they walk, they move. You don't want to confine them to bed. So you need to make sure that you have a discussion with your physician about are we getting this person out of bed? Are we ambulating? right because it's in their best interest if they can to get up and move that's totally fine to do with this you just again need to make sure that you're checking your measurement making sure that the swan hasn't moved in or out uh, and checking your waveforms so it's okay to get them out of bed as long as you have a physician's order that's good um, let's talk about some complications of the PA catheter I think I've already hit on one of the big ones of course is um, that this could wedge spontaneously, cut off blood flow to distal, distal flow past this balloon. 
Um, that would not be a good thing to have for a prolonged period of time. Um, rupture it. Again, really bad, uh, but can happen. Um, other things, of course, infections, sepsis, um, air embolus, if there's any air in your uh, pressure lines or if you're not flushing it properly, uh, you can get air embolus. here to help. We are happy to ask, answer questions. We're happy to assist you in any way possible. Uh, we can help you get it set up. Uh, we can show you the waveforms on the math lab report uh, that you should expect to see for that patient. But, you know, we're happy to help you and I'm sure your nursing colleagues would be happy to come and assist you. Any questions that you might have. Um, and I know I'm here, so if you need anything, just let me know. But good luck. I think you guys will do great. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with you all on these.